Hey, this is infinite procedural 3D terrain with rivers, tunnels, and overhangs. What you're seeing going on in the background is my procedural terrain generator creating these hills, mountains, lakes, rivers, and other features in real time. The terrain is also seeded. I'll go more into what this means later, but it basically means if you choose a different seed, you'll get a brand new terrain which looks totally different than any other terrain you've seen before from the same generator. I recorded this footage while flying around in the terrain generator in a few different roles. This will play in the background as I explain and describe some of the topics that came across as I was building this. This project can be distilled into two essential parts, the data and the rendering. The data consists of the density function, which basically defines if this position in space should be filled, a solid, or not. The rendering part consists of taking that data of which parts of space are solid or not and showing it to a screen in a somewhat pleasing manner. The main improvement I made over since my last video called uh, Stopping a Word Out of Pearl and Noise is that now I'm rendering directly from the GPU. In the last video, I was uh, downloading the mesh data from the GPU and then creating a Unity mesh within the CPU, which was then again sent back to the GPU for rendering. Now mesh is generated on the GPU and render directly on the GPU using procedural indirect. Also, I'm using some modified surface shaders to display these procedurally generated meshes. Right now, these surface shaders only have uh, Minecraft textures on them, mainly because uh, they tile easily and they look uh, somewhat decent. But uh, I am working on adding a little more high definition textures and also utilizing the surface shaders more. The terrain is chunked, which means that every 32 by 32 by 32 cube acts as its own object and it generates its own data and renders its own mesh. And uh, they're all stitched together to give uh, the impression that it's one whole terrain. Initially, I was planning on using an tree. That's why the Unity project is actually called Octree. But anyway, I decided against using an Octree simply because it would have been more work than the method I'm using right now, which is using a hashed vectors of every chunk to check if it has uh, moved. The density function needs to be quite complex in order to have all the features that you can see in the train, like the rivers, the rolling hills, the mountains, the seas, those spikes, some rocks, and of course the hardest part which was the the sort of the overhangs and the and the tunnels. These 3D features which uh, differ in the y-axis really differentiate this type of train from other uh, trains like the default Unity terrain, which is only based on the height map, so it can't have uh, overhangs or uh, tunnels and such. The basic principle of generating terrain out of noise it's, is to layer up different scales and different strengths of noises together so that they interact with each other in a in a positive way. My last video, Sculpting a World Out of uh, Perlin Noise, goes into depth and shows me while I'm uh, creating some 
new terrain in real time. These noise functions that I use have to be infinite so that the terrain can also be infinite. Another good thing about having an infinite noise is that you can combine them by using uh, offsets of uh, varying uh, randomness. So that's where the seeded part comes in. The seed helps uh, generate a random terrain each time, but if you want to see that terrain again, you can just use the same seed and it will generate the same terrain. I've implemented the seed using uh, offsets on the noise. So the seed is a number which gets uh, plugged in into a random number generator as its seed. And then I, I pick out numbers from the random number generators to create uh, some vectors, some random vectors. And then these random vectors are, are used to uh, offset some, uh, some noise. I use a different noise with a unique position for each different feature. So the river would have one, one uh, position and then the mountains would have one position. And then what I do is I use the random vectors created by the random number generator using the seed. I use those vectors to offset each of the feature noise. So that for each different seed, the maps combine in a unique way to create a unique terrain. One big revelation I had uh, since the last Sculpting Perlin video is the use of a uh, ridge noise. Ridge noise has the advantage of a Perlin noise in that it, it better mimics the real world, uh, sort of these features of rivers and uh, mountains, which are uh, smooth at the bottom, but sort of peak out. Using peak noise and a threshold, I'm, uh, I'm able to create uh, rivers of different uh, sort of widths. The width is controlled by the threshold. So if you have a high threshold, the river becomes wider. If you have a lower threshold, the river becomes smaller. Using those techniques, I generate the height map. And after that, I add on the 3D elements. So those are these spikes, the tunnels and overhangs. The technique I use for generating the spikes is very similar to a regular height map, but instead I rotate them using some uh, matrix. The overhangs or river tunnels, these were really the hard parts. I tried uh, a lot of different uh, cave composite functions, which basically means another function which takes the height map and applies some other function which differs in height and together they create sort of these uh, overhangs which are also uh, natural looking. That was actually the a big part a big problem with uh, these caves or tunnels was uh, making them look somewhat natural because it's okay to be a little bit not natural but uh, you don't want it just to be like a flat flat ceiling. My first try was to use another uh, ridge noise and this ridge noise would be perpendicular to the river so that it would create sort of a, big, a bridge and uh, the bridge would be at a certain height so that it would create, a, create these uh, overhangs and uh, cliffs. I had some really cool looking features but I decided to use another technique that was more natural than the sort of the perpendicular ridge noise approach. The process that I'm using right now is to apply a, a distance function. So basically radius square and sort of apply that to the Perlin noise. And then to create the overhang, I, I create a separate a separate hill over where the overhang is supposed to be so that combined with 
the distance function. Anything below the distance function becomes a uh, hollow, so that it becomes a cave or a tunnel. And anything above is filled in by that uh, new hill, so that it, it becomes a cave or a tunnel or an overhang. Recently, I've been working on, uh, let's say, applying some more realistic materials. So this means adding uh, more high definition textures, uh, putting in the ability to do uh, normal or bump maps or height maps and such. One problem that I was having was that um, since there are no UVs, it's hard to Try to use a normal map because Unity requires a tangents in order to do a bump maps. The way I got around that was uh, was creating sort of a fake tangents, fake tangents that uh, that mimic that mimic how the UV is done, which is basically a triplanar texturing. I've also been playing around with uh, Unity's new high definition render pipeline HDRP, which is uh, pretty cool. I had this idea about doing um, some fog with uh, fireflies. I thought that would look cool, so I'm looking if it would be possible to do um, this procedural mesh terrain in uh, HDRP Unity. After doing the more realistic materials, I'm looking at uh, adding collisions so that the player can walk around on the train. And after that, uh, I've already done the video on doing sort of the editing, train editing, so uh, changing the environment. But uh, I'd like to apply that to this project as well, sort of on a, on a whole train. In the previous video, I was only doing it in one chunk, so I need to apply that into a whole train, which shouldn't be too difficult, but it should have a very cool effect. And after that, uh, adding sort of trees or uh, grass, trees and grass, other foliage, that would be, I think that would be the plan, and then after that, I think it'd be ready to make some pretty cool games. Add some uh, wildlife, animal, uh, sort of that kind of stuff. But uh, that's it for me for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep playing some footage of the train generation in the background. So if you like to watch that, you can. But other than that, if you want to see more. Uh, I mainly post on my Twitter. Twitter is the best way to see everything that I do. Uh, YouTube is more for uh, longer form videos. I also post uh, on Reddit sometimes. Thanks for watching.